I'll yeah. just give a quick summary of Paul's presentation. Um, Paul's from Lakes Entrance Aboriginal um, Health Association. He's um, part of the Tackling Indigenous <coughs> Smoking team down there. So there's 37 TIS teams across Australia. Um, he spoke about their program addressing four aspects of addic addiction, behavioural, emotional, environmental and physical. Um, he, we also talked about the roadshow that he'd been on with Emma recently in the region. Um, they have, uh, they're doing a four-week program um, at, that began this year in February, which is, addresses the four aspects of addiction. Um, they also, um, we talked about placing TIS workers in GP clinics. So I guess that that's one of the strategies, top three strat strategies. One, first one being developing culturally appropriate resources and placing TIS workers in GP clinics. So instead of going all over Gippsland to find the clients, um, we t spoke about you know, locating them through the GP clinics is much more effective and also um, builds rapport rapport with um, the GPs themselves. Um, again, another strategy is the program that they've designed, which is a four-week session um, and involves group motivational interviewing as well, which has been really successful. Um, to get to the second quest question, what are the biggest opportunities? Um, what was highlighted was um, the demonstration of NRT samples at the GP clinic, so showing people how to use the smokalizers and also using motivational interviewing as well. That's been really effective. Um, Paul also spoke about um, having a monthly clinic in Bansdale. Um, they've been really engaged um, as well and that they'll be having clinics with GJAC and other Aboriginal organisations in the region. They've just developed a relaxation DVD, which um, will be launched next year, which um, focuses on the stresses of quitting smoking. So that'll be circulated around Gippsland, I'm sure. Um, getting to the third question about systems linkage. Um, with the TIS teams, we spoke about the importance of the TIS teams engaging with the client and discussing the choice of pharmacotherapy and providing them with samples so they can make a decision on what they think would suit them. Once they've made that decision, um, the TIS team will um, give them a referral to a GP who then, you know, together with the client will decide on the pharmacotherapy um, and then the doctors will be given a script for the closing the gap products or they'll be educated to say that this is what's available under the if the doctors are unaware they'll be educated by the TIS workers to say this is what this person can access um, and then the TIS team will follow up with the GP and quit Victoria to support the client after that as well so they have good me system mechanism in place. So we spoke about the role of the community and the importance of involving community in every step of the way, particularly when it comes to designing programs and promotional material and the importance of tailoring it to local needs. Um, with the work that Paul's doing, you know, he gets a real sense of community ownership so they feel like they, they own the program, So, um, which is really important and it's tailored to the community so they take great pride in it, which I think helps as well and the importance of, you know, showing the community evidence to help them make the right decisions, particularly with NRT as well.